love how after 365 days on an axis rotating, Earth just somehow figuratively hands us a pen, some an eraser, and others a slate to write new chapters. Set some goals and move with intention. It's our last day in 2021, and I'm attaching some new mantras to the year ahead, ones I intend to action starting tomorrow. I'm making my mental health a priority, setting some exercising goals, and paying more attention to what I eat. If this sounds anything like your New Year's resolution, then today's Jamaica Magazine provides the perfect route to get you there. I'm Audrey Williams, your facilitator for today's journey. Welcome to Jamaica Magazine. I'm Stephen McHugh, and this is your JIS News for December 31, 2021. The producer price index for the mining and quarrying industry increased by 1.4%. There was also an upward movement of 0.8% for the manufacturing industry. The information was released yesterday by the Statistical Institute of Jamaica, STATIN, in its November 2021 producer price index report. According to Statin, the increase in the index for mining and quarrying was influenced mainly by an upward movement of 1.5% in bauxite mining and alumina processing, as well as other mining and quarrying, which rose by 0.3%. With regard to the manufacturing industry, the increase was spurred by a rise in major groups such as refined petroleum products, chemicals and chemical products, and food beverages and tobacco. For the period November 2020 to November 2021, the point-to-point -point movement for the mining and quarrying industry was 27.4%. The point-to-point -point movement for the manufacturing industry was 20.2%. Transport and Mining Minister Robert Montague says El Hydro, which supplies the Jamaica Urban Transit Company, JUTC, with fuel, is now working on a plan to farm approximately 100,000 acres of castor beans as alternative fuel. Minister Montague says many of the reclaimed bauxite mining lands in St. Anne by Noranda Jamaica Bauxite Partners will be used to facilitate the initiation of the project. It's a major industry and we have spoken to JUTC who is also doing another very, very novel and innovative product, project rather, of using biodiesel and the feedstock for the biodiesel is the castor oil and therefore Noranda is first out of the gate and they are participating in the pilot project. And we have already had discussions with El Hydro. Minister Montague was speaking last week at the official opening of Naranda's Beltier Water Reservoir in St. Anne. He says the move will provide additional foreign exchange for the country as it also looks to export some of the castor oil. The Ministry of Health and Wellness is recommending a shorter isolation period for persons with a positive PCR COVID-19 test. Portfolio Minister Dr. Christopher Tufton says the decision follows careful review of recommendation by the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, the CDC. We are now recommending that we reduce the previously uh, position held of a 10-day uh, isolation, having tested positive, 10-day and release, to a 5-day and PCR positive test for release or a 10-day and no test for release. So that is an adjustment in the approach which we would like to pursue uh, going forward. Minister Tofton was speaking yesterday at the handing over ceremony of 500 COVID-19 home testing kits for tourism workers to the Jamaica Hotel and Tourist Association in Montego Bay. Data from the Ministry of Health revealed that for most of 2021, the proportion of imported cases weekly remained below 3%. However, there has been a steady increase over the last five weeks, with imported cases so far for this week accounting for one-fifth or about 21% of confirmed cases. Dr. Tufton clarified that these cases are in reference to all travelers entering the country, both Jamaicans and non-Jamaicans. Meanwhile, Dr. Tufton says the country's COVID-19 positivity rate has increased significantly over the past few weeks. Between December 12th and 18, 
we were in the green zone of less than 5% positivity. In fact, we came down as low as 3.8%. This is our seven-day average. Last week, December 19 to 25th, the positivity rate was 8.8%. And so far this week, the positivity rate was 21%. Um, the reproductive rate is just under 2%, so it's well over the 1% or below the 1% that we would like it to be. And I, I, as I came here today, I looked at the numbers. Um, 365 positive cases for yesterday, it's a 32%, 32.5% positivity rate. 38% of that number is are imported cases. As I said, not just not tourists, but persons coming into Jamaica, uh, which is quite high. Spectators will not be allowed at the upcoming cricket or schoolboy football matches scheduled on the sporting calendar. These include the white ball one day and T20 international matches between the West Indies and Ireland scheduled for January 8 to 16 at Sabina Park and the semi-final rounds of Manning and the Costa Cup matches. The update came from local government minister Desmond McKenzie in a press release. He says submissions were received from the Jamaica Cricket Association and the Intersecondary Schools Association for a limited number of spectators to attend the games. However, it is regrettably not possible to accommodate the request in light of the rising positivity rate and the threat of the Omicron variant. Minister McKenzie says at this point it is simply not practical to give the green light for public access to these games. He says similar submissions from other sporting bodies are being considered as the government continues to manage the pandemic and monitor the situation on a daily basis. According to Minister McKenzie, the government will exercise flexibility as the situation changes and facilitate the return of spectator participation in sport in the safest possible way and in the shortest possible time. And finally, scores of residents in St. Anne, Portland and St. Mary gained access to piped water supply for the first time following the recent completion of major pipeline infrastructure projects by the National Water Commission, NWC. The NWC is now urging the residents to become regularized by making applications for a new supply connection. Residents can begin applying for a connection in Uphill and Commando in St. Anne, Hamilton Mountain, George Lou to Sport Road, Maca Hill, Marley, Barkleytown, Fellowship Hall, Fontabell, and Jacks River in St. Mary. There is also Charlestown, Kildare, Fruitful Vale, Commodore, and Shrewsbury in Portland. The Commission adds that work is ongoing to complete other major pipeline infrastructure projects to address an expected increase in demand for water in St. Anne. And that's it for JIS News Today. I'm Stephen McHugh. Thanks for watching. Today's first feature introduces us to Orchid, and while her name represents many good things in her life, her current situation stands in stark contrast. Her story is written to the theme of a battle with mental health and its accompanying struggles, but we offer implements and resources to allow you to write an entirely different story, one of overcoming mental health. Learn more next. Hi, I'm Orchid. I know, I know. When you hear my name, you think of luxury, strength, and beauty. But currently, there is nothing beautiful about my situation. I am unemployed, having lost my job to the economic effects of COVID-19, and I don't know how long I can cope. Plus, I've struggled with mental illness in the past. There are so many thoughts flying through my head during the days, and at night, others keep me up. I understand that being down sometimes is a natural part of life, but it's not that. The stress, the anxiety, the worry, they keep getting worse. Of course, some days are better than others because I have medication to help. But even with that, some days are really bad. Okay, you may feel bad for me. 
and empathy is fine. But here is a bit of good news. I've been learning some techniques to help me deal with the problem. So if your story sounds similar to mine, then maybe you could apply these techniques as well. There is a direct correlation between what you eat and how you feel. And some foods have an enduring impact on your mental health. How do you feel after drinking a cup of coffee? Or how do your children react after having sugary drinks? You get my point, right? So if you're struggling with mental illness, now may be the time to start eating a healthy and balanced diet. Here's what we're adding. Various fruits and vegetables, and lots of it where possible. Our whole grain bread and cereals are a good addition to the mix. So too are nuts, seeds, dairy products and proteins in the right proportion and lots and lots of water. Never forget that any diet that's good for your physical health is just as good for your mental health. If alcohol is in your glass too often, then it might be a contributor to your mental illness. The truth is that while many of us drink alcohol to change our mood or to deal with things like worry or abandonment, the effect is quite fleeting. Alcohol withdrawal is real and there's nothing good about it because when that drink wears off, you'll only feel worse. And of course, there's the damage too much alcohol does to your body. Occasional light drinking is okay and enjoyable for a lot of people. Just remember, everything in moderation. And just like alcohol, smoking or using drugs provides a short-lived high. And after that, then what? Cigarette and drugs don't solve the problems associated with mental illness. They only mask and eventually worsen them. Here's another link between body and mind, exercising. When we exercise, the activities release endorphins that improve our mood and provide a relaxed sensation throughout the mind and body. Regular exercise can improve your self-esteem and help you concentrate, all while keeping the brain and other organs healthy. And get this, exercising doesn't have to just be about going to the gym or doing sporting activities. It can be as simple as a walk, anything that keeps your mind active. Sleep and good mental health are good friends. When you get enough sleep, it is easier to cope with stress, solve some problems, concentrate, and even think positively. While many doctors recommend eight hours of sleeping, your body will tell you how much you need. You'll know you're getting enough when you do not feel so sleepy or extremely tired during the day. I get that sometimes we have a lot to do, and it is easy to think that we can get more done if we can cut back on our sleep time. But get this, it becomes harder to get things done when we do not get enough sleep. If things are getting too much for you and it's becoming hard to cope, then ask for help. Your family or friends may be able to offer a listening ear or even practical solutions. You could even consider joining a support group or find a counselor to help you deal with your feelings. It's important to know that there are effective treatments for mental illness and people who get proper care can recover and learn to cope and experience fulfilling lives. Do any of your goals for tomorrow include working out, losing weight, or getting the body you envision for yourself? If your response is a resounding yes, then start tomorrow's journey with us today.
You want this lean, muscular physique and well-toned body. Framed for the beach, carnival parade or just your regular dressed down or formal attire. You want to cut the fat and develop that noticeable defined muscle and shape but not significant muscle size. There's nothing wrong with any of that. As long as you remember the most important thing is not a summer or designer body, but rather a healthy body. By doing efficient exercises and controlling your weight, you can expect to safely lose between 1 and 2 pounds a week on your journey to a more fit body. But doctors recommend that you should not lose more than 1 to 2 pounds per week. For many people, even this rate may be too aggressive in terms of dietary and exercise modifications. That body is not just going to come overnight. It's not going to come within two weeks or a month, depending, it all depends on the type of activity you do, how you do it. Within two months, if you stick to your exercise program and if it's done properly, you will see and feel results. Before starting any structured exercise program, however, persons should first consult with their doctor. The reason why we need a medical approval from our doctor is that a lot of us have pre-existing health conditions and some of us are not as fit as we think. For example, in Jamaica, four in 10 is hypertensive and they don't know it. And it's the same with diabetes, four in 10 and don't know it. And our stats tell us seven out of 10 Jamaicans die from a chronic disease. We define physical activity by intensity level and the frequency in which we do it. Frequency meaning how often we do it per week. For example, two times per week or five days per week. The intensity is the energy in which we, which we use to perform the activity, meaning how hard you work out. There's three levels of intensity, low, moderate and vigorous. If you want to lose weight, the Ministry of Health recommends 60 minutes of moderate to vigorous exercise five days per week. To lose and maintain weight, 90 minutes of moderate to vigorous exercise five days per week is recommended. There are two main categories of exercise, namely aerobic and anaerobic exercise. What this is saying that the body needs oxygen to break down fat that is stored in the body. All the calories stored in the body as fat need oxygen to break it down, that is to, in the tissue. So if you want to lose weight, you must do the aerobic activity to burn that fat that we use as energy when we're doing the activity. So the type of activities are like swimming, running, dancing. It is normally done for a long period of time. When you decide to lose weight, you want results. Results keep you motivated and on track. Cardiovascular exercises are part of the aerobic category and they help you trim down by burning extra calories. While this helps shed excess fat and strengthens your cardiorespiratory system, it won't build the tone in your muscles that you're after. Now when we talk about anaerobic activity, it is activity that does not need oxygen. It's quick, it's fast, it's snap. So most of the time that activity will help to tone the muscles that we're looking for. But you cannot tone unless you know we lose that fat. So you need to do the aerobic activity, then you do the anaerobic activity, which is like the weightlifting, the squats, the push-ups, the jumping, so that now you lose with aerobic and then you tone with anaerobic. Calories are the name of the game when you're trying to lose weight. Eat fewer calories than you burn and the scale will respond. Generally, um, we work with a 2,000 to 2,500 calorie intake per day for the general population. But for each person, their caloric requirements is different because we calculate it based on your specific age, your height, weight, gender, and how physically active you are. Females generally eat less because they carry less muscle mass than men and so they weigh less. The range is different. I, for someone who is very slim and short, then maybe 1,800 would be a safe amount to see for that person. But for men, 2,100 would be the lower end of the spectrum. You may create a caloric deficit, which will cause you to lose weight, but it's best to work with a balanced diet and exercise. A caloric deficit is when you consume less calories than what you're using for the day. So usually, persons try to cut their caloric intake significantly to lose a lot of weight at once, but consuming less than, say, 1,200 calories per day can cause you to have nutritional deficiencies, you can lose muscle and bone, 
and your body will also go into starvation mode so that you'll stop losing weight altogether. That's a no-no. The best way to slim down and tone up is to combine balanced diet and exercise. And avoid fad diets such as low-carb, high-protein or anything that deviates from a balanced diet. bad idea to read the labels on food packages before you buy or even consume them but even that within itself can be difficult for some with all the scientific terms tables and numbers so our next feature breaks it down for you gives you the tools to understand and interpret food labels <music> Your body needs energy and we call this our daily requirements of calories and for Jamaican men it's about 2100 for Jamaican women it's about 1900 calories per day the calories is just a unit of energy to say how much energy you need to get around your daily activities and so on if you're more active and you you're not in a desk job then you're going to burn more calories if you go to work when you get up in the morning you sit in a car and you go to work you sit in uh, at a desk all day and then lunchtime come you order and they deliver the food to you and then you eat that and you go back and sit again and then you sit in a, a bus or a car and you go home so you're sitting all day you're not doing much versus somebody who's on the road and they're walking around or they're standing all day like the teachers and nurses and so on then you'll realize the difference in how much energy you will need and so if you are more active you should be eating a little bit more but the problem is that everybody is eating as if them working in sugar cane fields, chopping cane all day. And this is the problem. So we consume more calories than we are burning off. And every day if we keep on consuming calories, you need 3,500 calories to make one pound of fat. One soda, if you look on the serving size for these things, these juices and so on, you'll think that, oh, it's just 110 calories. But how many servings come in that, that container? About three or two and a half. So you can easily drink 300 calories like that. And if you do that five times for the day, that's 1,500 calories. You almost don't need to eat anything else for the rest of the day. So the excess calories come in the body and then the body begins to store them as fat. And then you put on more weight and more weight. You have to watch the pastries and the breads and all of these things that people, even when they're vegetarian, they still have a lot of these little snacks and so on. These things are full of calories. You know that one, one of the, 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 the cream crackers is about 450 calories. Water crackers is about 500. Yeah, nobody don't want to hear. I never want to believe it either. But this is what you get, the, the, the big, the, the packs that you get. And a lot of people eat them with butter, right? So can you imagine how many calories you're putting in your body with one little snack? And you don't talk about the, the, the tea yet with the milk, the condensed milk and the sugar that you have to have that with. All of these things, they add up without you even knowing. The ingredients label will go from the most to the least in a product. So if, it's, if the product is making a claim, look at where that claim is if it is one, two or three, because if it falls less than that, you're really not getting value for your money, right, in terms of content. The nutrition facts. One of the first things you're going to look at is the, um, the servings per container, and this says 2.5, which means it's two and a half servings in the container. You are not supposed to drink it, you must share it, right? And then you're going to look at your calories. It says 90 calories, but it's 90 calories per serving, and it's 2.5 servings. So it's 2.5 times 90, which comes out to about 225. And then you come down and you look at your sugar, and it's 22 grams of sugar, but it's per serving. So the entire container is 2.5 times 22, 
which works out about 55, 56 if my maths is right. And there's four grams equal one teaspoon. So you end up with about roughly 14 teaspoons of sugar. And that, that is, you use this template for all the products that have nutritional facts on them. This is 14 teaspoons of sugar. And the American Heart Association recommends that for an adult male, he con you're, you're, you're supposed to consume nine teaspoons of added sugar per day. For an adult female, it is six teaspoons of added sugar per day. And for a child, it's less than six teaspoons per day. And a child here, we're talking about from two to 18 years old. Don't look at a container and judge it by the size alone. You have, it's very important to read the label so you know exactly. And look at it, 220 calories. For parents, we're, we're asking them you know, to be very mindful of how much sugar they're giving their kids, right? Because it impacts upon their health in the, not, in the long term. We try to provide information to parents and guardians, teachers, anyone about the alternatives to these sugary drinks because really you don't need them in your diet. You can get enough sugar that you need from your, the foods that you eat, the carbohydrates which are converted to sugars in your body which give you energy. So some of the alternatives are of course water, it's, um, it's the best one, but there's also fresh fruit juices. So blending your own juices without adding sugar and you'll have the natural sugars and fiber from the fruits. There's coconut water, it should be, um, you should actually drink this in moderation because it does have quite a, a high sugar content, um, but it is a good alternative. For the children, freezing the juices into popsicles or ice cubes so that it's more interesting for them to drink, as well as doing infused water. So infused water is... Um, it's a process where you cut up your favorite fruit or vegetable or even mint leaves or aloe. You place it in water overnight so that the, the vitamins, the minerals, all the goodness from the fruits and vegetables are infused into the water and you can have that. It's not sugar sweetened and it gives you the vitamins and minerals that you need throughout the day. And then for children, there's unsweetened milk. So not flavored milks like the chocolate milk, but unsweetened milk doesn't have a high sugar content and it also will give the children the calcium that they need for their growing bodies as well. What you see daily on Jamaica Magazine is a collective effort of some hands, minds and hearts working behind the scenes to keep our cameras rolling, the scripts coming in, connecting the right cables, keeping the editing software in constant motion and creating a seamless database. From Jamaica Magazine to your screens, living rooms, offices or wherever you're watching from, here are some members of the hard-working television team. We put the final pause for today's show. Thanks for sticking through the Jamaica Magazine journey. And a refresher of this, yesterday's journey and others can be had through the GIS YouTube channel. Also, visit our Facebook, Instagram and Twitter pages for more information. We may start a new year tomorrow, but let's be guided by the ethos that while time flies, you're the pilot. What direction are you steering the new year towards? From all of us here at the GIS, I'm Audrey Williams. See you soon. This has been a production of the Jamaica Information Service, the voice of Jamaica.